Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records and read an article on ultimateclassicrock.com today about with David Gilmore talking about why there wasn't a successor to Pink Floyd, meaning why there weren't more bands that took that mantle and that torch and continued on in the vein of a Pink Floyd. And David Gilmore suggested, you know, maybe greed had something to do with it. Maybe patience to the record companies. Um, you know, he says he was in the right place at the right time back in 1968 when he joined Pink Floyd. He said that was part of what was a golden age, he told UK's ITV News in a recent interview. There were a lot of record companies who had ideologies that involved them investing money in the futures of young and talented people. He continued, that doesn't seem to be here right now in the same sort of way. Unfortunately, ask why that was the case, he thought for a moment before replying, greed, maybe short-term thinking, I suppose what I would say is what I would say. You know, when you look back at the history of rock, you know, rock music's based out of the blues. You know, learning how to play a guitar, learning how to play an instrument. Elvis comes onto the scene. People and Buddy Holly, young people uh, in Great Britain and the United States are influenced by that. They pick up a guitar, they get with their friends, they start playing, they learn how to become bands. Um, the Beatles started off playing cover songs. The Rolling Stones started off playing cover songs. They learned how to write. The record company has invested in them to work on their craft. The Beatles didn't have truly great albums for a couple, and the Beatles are not necessarily the best example, but maybe the Stones are a better example. They don't really come into their own for two or three, four albums, and really don't really come into their own until they add maybe Mick Taylor and Beggar's Banquet and Sticky Fingers and Exile on Main Street. Um, you know, bands like the Birds, you know, they had the desire to play music. When they started, they barely knew how to play their instruments and they developed this craft and the record company was behind them and they were giving them money to keep going and find a place to live and, and hone their craft until they were able to put albums out like Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Um, you know, even bands like Grateful Dead, you know, that first album is very, very basic. And it takes them four or five albums to put out A Working Man's Dead or American Beauty or Mars Hotel. Kansas, another perfect example. You know, they say that, you know, they had money um, from the record company's support to put out those first three albums before you can put out something like Left Overture and, and come into your own and finally get that hit that the record company is finally getting paid back uh, after all these years, you know, nowadays it's about immediate success. It's about putting money into bands that the record company can control, putting money into bands and artists where there's a lot, tons of producers who are all, you know, making money off it, ton, tons of songwriters who are making money off it, whatever makes the most money not for the artist, but for the record company, the writers and the producers, um, that's what they would rather invest in. Not a self-contained writer or a guy that can do all of his own publishing, a guy that can write music on his own or bands that um, need to grow and learn how to do it themselves. They'd rather issue you music to put out. They want you to look good and present well, and then they'll go ahead and take that money. You know, Genesis, you know, another example. That first album, very different than what you get on Nursery Crime, what you then get on Selling in England by the Pound. Um, even Rush's first album is Meat and Potatoes Rock, and it gets more progressive as Fly by Night and Caress of Steel and ultimately 2112 where they break. Um, you know, bands like New York Dolls barely knew how to play their instruments. Kiss barely knew how to play their instruments. I don't know if the Ramones ever learned how to play their instruments. 
you know, it's just a different world. And it's unfortunate because you're not getting money backed into some young rock bands. The industry is not pushing rock. Rock's not dead. There's tons of great bands out there. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard's an example. Their first album, very garagey. And now they're putting out just incredible stuff. It's very deep and very, um, got many layers to it. The, the industry doesn't have the patience to to invest in the future of young, talented people like, like David Gilmore said. Pink, those guys in Pink Floyd barely knew how to play their instruments. Sid Barrett and Roger Waters, you know, and Richard Wright probably was the most talented guy at the beginning, but they learned how to craft. They learned how to get through those first albums and, and then finally, you know, get into their glory years where they put out a string of incredible albums. Um, Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, etc. Um, are we going to see that again? There's still young artists that will never see the light of day that are putting out great music. I'm not saying that rock is dead. It's just rock is dead in the sense that the industry does not want to get behind that they don't really want you coming up with your own music um, unless they're forced to unless they're forced to put your music out um, you know Greta Van Fleet they're forced to get behind that because the music's really good um, lots of bands and artists can put their own music out on the internet you know some some of this stuff's undeniable some of these artists are undeniable and they, they hit the YouTube channels and make, make money, put some records out uh, on their own labels or some sort of private labels and they can go tour and they're exactly what the record industry doesn't want. They don't want you to go through your own independent channels. They want to control you and they want to be the puppet masters, frankly, a puppet master for a Taylor Swift. A puppet master for a Beyonce or a huge artist like that or a pink and uh, you know we're not going to necessarily get presented bands like Pink Floyd by the industry or by the mainstream media you're gonna have to dig deeper yourself and find that music and that's what I try to do I don't know everything about everything that's underground but I'm digging and I'm and I'm looking at sites to find. I like progressive rock. I like uncovering bands that I didn't know about, like, like, um, you know, uh, Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson and, uh, you know, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard and Aurora Clara and Zop and some of these bands that are out there, um, that are incredible. Eyeless Owl. Check out Eyeless Owl. Anyway, check out my channel. Sorry I haven't been doing as many shows lately. Subscribe to my channel if you like this content. And hit like and share these videos. Peace out. See ya.